Folks, uh, you're welcome back to Talk From The Terrace on Celtic Fanzine TV. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. And I'm joined today by the one and only Mr. John Hartson. It's been over a year since we spoke, John. We had you on the Celtic Soul podcast. How have you been? I've been good. Um, you know, I've had a quite a, a hectic year, really. I had a little bereavement in the family, which was not very nice. Um, I also had the big uh, knee construction, uh, a knee replacement, if you like, which kept me out of a few things. But um, I'm healthy, Andy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. My children are good. Um, enjoying life in, in Edinburgh. I've just, just been working a little bit with ITV Sport for the, for the Euros. I uh, really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed the co comms there. So, like everybody else now, looking forward to the new season. But no, thank you for asking. Everything is very good. Yeah, the Euros have been really good, John. I know Wales bowed out after the first round after the group stages, but they, they done okay and they can be proud of themselves. Yeah, we did do okay. You know, when you think that uh, we haven't qualified for a major tournament for 58 years and then we went back to back, you know, Euros after Euros, um, which was a good, uh, you know, accomplishment by the players. Uh, we never quite got to the semi final like we did in, in France in 2016. But we did ever so well to get out of a competitive group Turkey, Italy, and Switzerland. We finished second to Italy in the, uh, in the group. So, um, and unfortunately, we weren't strong enough to beat Denmark, who, of course, you know, play England tomorrow evening at Wembley. So um, they're, they're, they're a better team than what, than, what, than what people give them credit for. You know, obviously, you know, Christian Eriksen as well. I think everybody breathed a huge sigh of relief when, uh, when, we, saw, when we saw him get carried off by, his, by his, uh, his, 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 the Denmark players. And we saw him sit up and... Uh, you know, he, 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 I, I feared the worst, Andrew. I've got to be honest. I really feared the worst when I saw when I saw the um, the, the paramedics give him CPR by the side of the pitch, and you saw his body jumping up and down off the ground, and the players were crying, the supporters were crying, and I thought, oh no, I hope this is not what what a lot of people think it is. Um, but you know, uh, they went out eventually and, and played the game. And, uh, and they obviously got beat uh, that, that game. Uh, I'm not too sure whether I'm able to go out on that same night personally and perform. Um, but obviously, I think the, the relief of seeing Christian alive um, and, and sitting up in, in, the, in the hospital, that would have probably urged the, the Denmark players um, to go and face um, you know, their opponents that night. I think it was... Um, was it... Uh, Finland? Yes, the first one, yeah. Yeah, they lost that game eventually to Finland. But, uh, you know, I think the result was, you know, was irrelevant. I think the, the more, the, the bigger point was uh, was Christian Eriksen's health. I'm just delighted that he's come through and he's, uh, he's getting stronger all the time now. Yeah, and you, was, you mentioned that you are doing a bit for um, national television, well, ITV. Um, you done a little bit of media last year, John. Not as much as we would have expected because you had you had the knee and and of course you had um, bereavement and condolences to you once again. But just be, before we look forward to the season, when we look back at last season, um, how hard was it, John? From you know you you're, you were a player, played you know you played with Lenny, you you're in the media. You have to try and you know be critical when you have to be and you have, but you're also a Celtic fan so it, it, is it, was it very hard to I suppose be honest to yourself and to the, to the viewers well I think what, what I've always tried to be is, uh, is, is honest that's all you can be all you can do is give your views you know my view doesn't mean any more than a supporter's view because, because I played the game, and you get a little bit of respect for that. But still, you know, supporters are very knowledgeable. They they feel they have a right to, um, to sometimes vent their anger and and vent their frustrations. And I'm exactly the same. Um, and you know, I I think that I was quite balanced over the whole piece. Um, I don't want to talk too much about last season because I think we all know. Um, you know what went wrong. It, it was a pretty disastrous season, 
um, in such a, you know, a fantastic opportunity as well, an unprecedented potential, 10 in a row at stake. Um, but, we, you know, we failed on all fronts, you know, right from the beginning, going out to the Champions League, qualified to Ferenc Varos, and then um, some poor performances in the Europa League, and then not beating Rangers over the course of playing them six times. That's not happened for a long time, and eventually losing losing the league by 25 points. It was it was pretty much um, I think it probably come to a shock to everybody as much as myself. Really, um, nobody expected that. So the club have made made the change. We've got a new man in charge, um, you know, and I think everybody's pretty pretty excited about the new season. I think um, Postacoglu has come in, uh, Ange Postacoglu. Um, and he looks, you know, he got a bit of desire about him. I think he, he's the type of guy, that he looks like he knows um, what he wants out of his players. I think he's, um, there's a lot more to come from him because the new managers, they don't want to give everything away in the first couple of weeks. They want to get to know the, the players better and they want to know what type of players that he can put the arm around, what type of players will accept the volicking, what type of players, you know, you can, you can talk to honestly. Martin O'Neill didn't care what type of player you were. He just told you as it was and you dealt with it, you know. Um, but as I said, it's, it's an exciting time. Um, I still expect a few more signings. I expect another five or six to come in the door and I'm expecting three or four to leave. Um, that's how I see it right now. This, You know, the first game is coming up on the uh, We Play Hearts on the 31st of July. And then the big one then away to Rangers on the 29th of August. So the games are coming thick and fast. Champions League um, qualifiers play Mutchaland in less than two weeks. Mutchaland, sorry. Um, so the lads need to get up to speed. And it's a big challenge for, for, for Ange. I've got to say that. It's a huge challenge for him. Yeah, I think um, like everybody is behind them. It was a it was a long time coming for a manager to be appointment after the um the whole Eddie Howe saga, and it was great to have him in. He, he's he met with the media, he's met with the fan media, he's met with the players. He's on pre season now, so so everything is in place as as you say. You're expecting signings. I think we all are. We're also expecting a few players out the door because if the manager from last year is to be believed, there was a there was there was a handful wanted away, but. Mm. That Champions League game just comes so soon, John. And normally we are seeded. Normally we have a warm-up game. It could be against the, you know, we went to Gibraltar when Brendan Rodgers had his first game. Okay, he was beaten, but he knew he, he knew he was going to win the second leg. And this is a really tough task for, you know, not only a new manager, but a new man to Glasgow. Yeah, it is. And it's so important that we try and get through these Qualifiers, um, they're, they're not easy games, as as you know shown before. I think when I was there, we went out to uh, Basel, Basel of Switzerland. We lost to um, uh, Bratislava as well. Uh, we lost to them. Uh, we nearly pulled it back. We lost five nil away, and we beat them four nil in the home game. So if you're not ready, you know uh, if you're not ready to go. Um, then you know you you can get hurt. You you, you won't get the right result. Um, so I'm sure um, the new manager Postecoglou Ange is trying to get everybody up to speed as quick as he can without overworking them. Um, trying to get the new players in, you know, involved the two lads we've signed Liam Shaw and Yuri uh, Kaid from Sheffield Wednesday. Two young lads, both 20 years of age. Um, you know they both they both look decent. They're from decent club like Sheffield Wednesday, played in the Championship last season down in England. Um, so you're trying to trying to blood them to into the team, trying to get them to know their the new teammates. You he'll, you'll be relying on one or two other senior players as well. You know like um, uh, like Edward for instance. I'm not quite sure. Um, what he will do with the the ones who, who are with the Euros.
you know some other players that that obviously were with with the um, with the national teams. So you know I I'm I'm fairly excited about the beginning of the season to see how we go, but there's no there's no doubt about it for me, Andrew. The biggest thing that the manager has to do, and now you know this, he's an experienced man. He's, he's managed he's managed Australia, you know he's managed a top side in Japan. Um, he's managed with the younger ages as well, with Australia, um, been successful. And he'll know this, that the biggest challenge he has is to go and win football matches. And to win matches, you need good players. Now, the players last year just simply weren't good enough. And he needs to, he needs to have a look at that. He needs to see who he wants, who he wants on board with him, who he wants to take along with him. Because it won't be an easy season. It'll be difficult to claw back that, that lead. Um, Rangers will start favourites. I have no doubt about that, uh, because they've got that little bit of momentum. They'll be feeling good about themselves. Um, so he needs to know what he needs. In my opinion, I think he needs a bit of experience in the in in that side. He needs some experience. You know, there's some still young players in there, um, and of course, I know you've got the the boys I've just mentioned there, um, like Lee Griffiths, like like. Um, like you know, Callum McGregor, like like one or two others, um, you know, who've got a bit of experience, but they need a bit of help, you know. And I would like to see four or five come in with that little bit of experience. You know, you look at the Rangers side, you know, Golson played in the Premier League, Stephen Davis played in the Premier League, Jermaine Defoe in the Premier League, Scott Artfield, uh, Scott Arfield Premier League, you know, their goalkeeper um, uh, McGregor Premier League. Alan McGregor, so they, they seem to have a lot of experience, and um, that 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 can certainly help. And I still feel I feel that Celtic, although they went on this brilliant run of nine consecutive um, leagues, I still feel as if experience is is key because it can help one or two of the younger players that that are coming through there at Celtic, and uh, I think that's what Ange needs to be looking for: quality players. You know, quality players. I know he's been linked with Kevin Nisbet for Hibs. Kevin Nisbet played most of his career in Scotland for the lower leagues. Um, I think he got 14 goals last season, 14 league goals. Um, so, you know, is that a signing? Does that tell you something about Edward? If he goes and gets another signing, he's got a Yeti. He's got Griffiths, who's just extended his deal by another year. He's got Edward and Nisbet. You know, he won't want to pay four and a half million pounds for him and not play him. So, you know, there's there's an awful lot to, to look at. And uh, I just hope that, you know, he, he can get his team set up, get some work done for them, get, get their shape on the pitch uh, in terms of which way they're going to play. Are they going to play a diamond? Are they going to play 4-3-3? Three, three? Are they going to play three at the back? Stick with a goalkeeper. Don't chop and change too much, which I think was was it was a, a common fault last season. I think we chopped and changed far too much, um, rather than sticking with, you know, a team that you know you, you can trust and go out there and um, and and play these players on a consistent basis, not change the formation, not change the system week in week out. Um, sometimes that's because of injuries and suspensions, but. You know, I, I would like to see him stick with a certain team, a certain system, get the players to work within that system. And um, and obviously we need a good start. I do think, John, that the Champions League qualifying section, even if we were to beat Middleland, it would give us immense confidence. But it's going to be a tough, it, you know, there's three really tough um, two, two like, two-legged encounters to get there. And I think, you know, he'll certainly be the one that will be probably of the most value, maybe with Ayer as well. And they would say, I would I would certainly think that they would be off if, if we didn't qualify for the Champions League. Well, yeah, you, you, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, do we? You know, we all we all thought Eddie Howe, you know, that, that didn't work out as we all thought. Everybody was saying he's getting announced on Monday. He's been announced 18 times. <laughs> he never once was he announced. No, you know I don't even know how, how late it was before he even started having talks. Um, and I'm hearing different things of why it broke down and everything else. And um, 
you don't really know because we're not party to them conversations. And was it because of maybe he wanted to bring in his own staff? Was it because he was told he could only sign certain players? Was, you know, we, we're not really in them discussions. I've heard one or two things, the reasons why he never took it. Um, but again, you know, um, in terms of Edward and Christopher Ayer, you know, I, I think it was common knowledge last season, maybe Christopher Ayer was, you know, with a year left on his contract. Um, it would be it would be viable for the club to sell him because in six months' time he can leave freedom of contract. He can he's a, he's he's available to speak to other clubs and he could potentially leave for nothing. Whereas if you get a ten or twelve or whatever million pound bid for him now, you know, I know you lose a good player, but the club has to work that way. Can't afford to lose that type of money. And it's the same with, with Edward. You know, Edward um, just felt his head got a little bit turned last season. And um, he never really started performing until, um, you know, late on after Christmas. Uh, and he's still got a bag full of goals because he's always going to get goals. But you just think with Edward... Um, uh, we would love to keep him, but you know, I, I think that um, again, if the right money comes in for him, you know, I I, I think he was he was almost um, persuaded last season. Look, give us another year because I think with you, we we stand a great chance of of obviously creating history and winning the league. It didn't happen, so you don't know where that leaves him now in terms of you know, as his agent said. Look, stay for a year last last season, and then next season, then we will see what happens again. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to. My honest view is is that four or five more will come in, and we might just need to use the funds of a couple of players, um, you know, to go and buy them players and to give Ange a little bit of a pot of the money. Now, I know the Champions League makes a difference as well, but if you're set your heart on leaving and your agents are looking for clubs for you, then I'm not too sure, um, you know, whether you, you can you could say, well, I'll stay for six games, I'll try and get us through to the Champions League. By then, the window would have shut. I just think if these players want to go and they've got aspirations of going elsewhere, they don't want to commit to Celtic, um, then I think they should be looking to sell them. You know, that's that's my view. You want players at the club that are gonna that are gonna buy into what the manager wants, gonna buy into what type of work and system he wants to play, um, and you need to stick to that, and you need to be committed to it. You know, it's not a club that you know we can't just rest on our laurels. Celtic, you know, I think a massive reaction is needed. You know, to try and claw back the title, back to back to Celtic Park. Uh, we've been used to winning. We're not used to not winning. Everybody's wants to get back to that way. And you want players that are fully committed. I'm not saying Edward and I aren't, but if they aren't, then you know things need to things need to be done about that because uh, one way or another, they're two big players, um, so their futures need to be sorted. Do indeed, John. Um, John, thank you so much for coming on to the show and don't leave it another year before you come back to talk to us. And hopefully, John, now with the, with the old vaccines in our arms, that we, we'll, we'll get back to meeting in the flesh instead of through, through yeah. Zoom and, and WhatsApp in each other. So, um, oh, brilliant, mate. Again, John, Superb. thank you so much. All right, Andy, look after yourself. Give my best to the family, mate. All the best. And you too, John. Thank you. Thank you.